This is a Barita podcast, which is a medium for information purposes only. This podcast is not a recommendation to buy or sell any securities. This isn't a research report, nor intended to serve as a basis for making any investment decisions. Contact a licensed investment advisor before making any financial decisions. Let's get into the Barita podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining up, joining us uh, for the Barita podcast. Today, we have with us Richardo Williams, AVP of Investment Strategy and Portfolio Advisory at Barita Investments. Thank you, Richardo. And we have Dave Dixon, Senior Vice President, Sales and Service at Barita Investments. Thank you very much, Dave. Thanks, Raul. Good to be, you know, here to talk to you and the clients. Yes. So, what we're trying to do is to just add value to the investing public, and for anybody that might be curious about investing in Jamaica and Barita's role there, mm-hmm. to just you know share some of the hard work that the team has done, and really seek to to give differentiated value to our listeners, right? So I'll start off right away with you, Dave. You know, a lot is a lot has been going on. There's been a lot of change in the current environment. What are clients saying? Thanks, Raul. You know, clients, you know, have been quite concerned over the last um, couple of years, um, primarily, you know, due to the effects that the pandemic initially had on the market. Um, you know, persons were concerned about fluctuation in the value of their portfolio. Persons, you know, looking to make changes to create more stability in the portfolio. Persons looking for advice to see how they can benefit from the opportunities um, that are in the market, um, despite, you know, um, conditions globally. Um, Customers want to know that they can still, you know, find good products and, and, and services um, to meet their financial goals over time. And that, you know, they, the, the fund managers at Barita and the advisors, you know, are in tune with what is happening and can, you know, provide them with the appropriate guidance. Okay. Okay. And is, are there any particular areas of, of common interest that you find? Yeah, I think most persons are concerned about the returns, the, the in, in, interest, increase in interest rate environment. Uh, they want to see how they can benefit. Um, the other area is how, how is that in, increased interest rate affecting their portfolio, um, whether they're in pool funds or they have fixed income securities outright. They are obviously concerned um, and would want to know, you know, how, how to position themselves for the future. Yes. So I believe that's something on, on top of the, the client's mind and the advisors have been having very fruitful conversations with them, um, you know, using the research um, that's provided by, by your team, you know, which is quite helpful in making those decisions. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, from even an investment banking point of view, you know, there's a lot happening right now. We see what's happening with interest rates. We see what's happening with geopolitics, and there is there is concern from corporates as well. There they see things. Uh, they see a lot of uncertainty on the horizon. So right. one of the things we want to talk through here is really just to help investors get perspective and exactly. navigate these the, these waters. So you know, with that being said. One of the goals here from a from a retail or client point of view is to really discuss the means by which clients can increase the value of their portfolio. So back to returns, like you were talking, right. and um, just talking about really uh, what what is going to help to 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 build wealth mm-hmm. over the long term, mm-hmm. right? So. In terms of transformational value on portfolios, mm-hmm. Ricardo, I want to bring you in now to just share your views on the current environment. And but even before we get there, generally speaking, how how do clients? Uh, what do you find impacts portfolios 
in the greatest way from a transformational um, return standpoint over time? Um, <clears throat> well, the truth is, you know, uh, Raul, what impacts on, <laughs> on portfolios over multiple uh, horizons is, is quite behavioral. And by that, I mean it means staying invested, um, notwithstanding the natural, what you call oscillations um, in the market. In other words, yes. markets will go up, markets will come down. Um, but over time, the trajectory typically um, is upwards. And usually, um, just, and this is just using um, historical data, um, equity exposure typically um, gives the best long-term um, results, even though at a particular point in time, um, you can see what we call drawdowns, which is, you know, the market will kind of tank from the peak to the trough, right? As we saw in March of 2020, and then the market kind of rebounded um, as well. So uh, just just to dovetail back to the, the answer, um, keep invested, um, ignore, quote unquote, the noise um, in the market, because there will be a lot of, of noise when there are so many different things um, coming up all at once. So now we're talking about yield curve inversion. There is the backdrop of the Ukraine-Russian conflict. And now we're thinking about or anticipating the possibility um, of, a, of a recession um, in the in the US. So investors who are not sophisticated might feel skittish, might want to sell their holdings, and those who are on the sidelines might decide to, to wait that they don't want to enter um, the market, the markets. No, um, a rational approach is, is important um, because each market condition um, affords you opportunities. Right. So in this case, for example, when we look at the data um, of previous instances where we have a significant conflict of the nature that we're seeing um, in Ukraine, um, commodities typically um, perform well during this yes. period. And true to form, that is what we're seeing. If we use just the energy index um, as a proxy for this, it is the best performing class year to date, while most others um, are, are in the doldrums. Utilities, again, um, typically is resilient during this period and consistent with that historical um, performance. Utilities are performing well um, also. We can step back and say, okay, what does that mean for us even locally? Um, quality investing is important um, here again too. So companies, um, and we've been saying this from the beginning of the pandemic, uh, companies that have strong balance sheet, a very good um, management, um, have a history of generating um, significant returns, sustainable returns on incremental capital, um, typically will do well, irrespective of the market cycles. And if the last couple of earning seasons is anything to go by, again, I think we would have been proven quite right there. So to answer your question again, um, Raul, keep invested, keep the emotions um, in intact in because if your emotions can be your, your worst enemy when mm. the market gyrations come about. Okay, D Dave, you want to say something? No, no, I'm, I'm, well, I'm in agreement with, with, with all of what, um, you know, was said. Um, we do find that the behavior um, is important um, to building that wealth. And, you know, it's, it's probably the most game-changing thing that you could do is to, instead of staying on the sideline um, and wait, you wait while you're in the market, wait for the opportunity to present itself based on the research um, analysis that is done on those, on those good companies. And if, and if the research suggests that the company that, com that, you're, not, that you're invested in um, may have some challenges down the road and you might want to re reallocate that position. So I'd encourage the clients to, you know, to access the research information that is provided by our research team. Our advisors are armed with this information and, you know, they are able to sit with the individual and, and, and go through their, um, you know, journey and, 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 and their objectives 
and their future plans and be able to you know redesign their their um, investments if that is necessary or to provide some guidance into how um, that analysis now filters down into our market and how they can benefit from that so you know it's, it's encouraging that um, y- y- you know some customers will jump on that information and and they'll use it wisely um, you know to make their investment decisions you know we, we, we try our very best to 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 talk to our clients about you know looking at the the fundamentals of what's really happening as opposed to um, just making a, an investment decision to exit the market um, simply because of you know emotions and and the fear of um, you know the, the investment declining any further. So yeah. we strongly encourage you know our clients to to seek the advice of, our, of, of one of our licensed um, investment advisor um, before they make you know investment decisions um, and access the research that is available on our website. Yes. All right. So let, let, let's get into that. So we have, we have an important theme here and a point that we're making in terms of behavioral uh, factors that matter for your portfolio. I had said on the millennial edition of our uh, Money IQ documentary, I think it was a few months back, that for most investors, most individual investors, what makes sense is to have the discipline to stay committed to allocating to their portfolio, particularly their stock portfolio, on a consistent basis. So whatever you and your advisor decide, whether it be monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, whatever the case is, it is very important to stay with that allocation, come high, come low, right? Because markets are generally moving up and it's particularly important to keep that discipline in a pressured or downward um, trending market, right? Uh, that's that that that's a position I shared that I think is useful for most clients. R- Richardo, would you would you agree with the the kind of steady, continued, consistent allocating approach? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, for for retail investors, um, it's it's I think one of the most prudent things you can do just to be consistent and be disciplined um, over your investment you know horizon. Um, and at the heart of this idea, what we're really talking about here is the magic of compound um, interest and compounding, right? Um, because I'm, I'm not sure if how, how many persons have actually seen the calculation of of, of Warren Buffett's um, fortune in terms of how it accumulated. Yes. Um, uh, probably about sixty percent of that actually came in his his latter years, right? And just the math of compounding, right? Yes. You know, one compounds two compound three. So the higher or further out into the future you go, the larger the sum. Um, gets um, just by those small incremental um, things, as opposed to you trying to make a lump sum here and there, which at the heart of that idea is trying to time the market. Yes. Right? And, um, and that is not always uh, a prudent thing to do. You could be lucky, you could get lucky, <laughs> um, right? Yes. Yes. Um, but, but one of the things that we try to to think about, um, even outside of investing, right? The the nature of life is that outcomes are inherently uncertain, yes. um, right? And so you 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 can get lucky, um, but you followed a poor script, yes. right? And you can in fact follow something that's entirely logical, something dis- that's disciplined. And you get a poor outcome, yes. right? Um, but generally. If in a repeated game, in a repeated scenario, it is likely that you're going to get a very good outcome if you just be consistent um, over a period of over a period of time. Because at yeah. the heart of that argument is the magic of um, of compounding your magic your- of compounding. Yeah, and, and we came back, so it comes back to the famous time in the market is more important than timing. The market, mm. right? And that can be that can be a painful game. So 
All right. I'd like to just add to that, you know, Raul, and I mean, you know, here, here, here at Barita, um, our clients have, you know, the ability to start out small and, uh, you know, whether it's a standing order or just stopping by the office and making one of those, you know, addition to your portfolio. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's quite seam seamless and, um, you know, it's very important that that habit be developed uh as as you know you you add to that investment the fund manager if you're you know in one of the pool funds you have a, an expert managing that for you so yes. your the level of return is not dependent on the amount of money that you have you're 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 benefiting from returns that um you know previously you would have had to have millions to, to, to get um secure that yes. level of return yes. so your your ten thousand your twenty thousand your fifty thousand a month hundred thousand whatever it is you know can um keep ahead of inflation over time um you know, and once you consistently um add to that investment you can realize the you know the objectives the financial objectives or the financial freedom that you ultimately want and and and, and get the lifestyle that you you you, you know you work towards um, we have the products here in terms of the Unitrust products. We, we have access to individual securities if that's your preference. And if you have the time to buy, to select your individual stocks using the research that we have. And, uh, you know, we recommend that um, you, as part of your, for someone who is building wealth, that they do regular regular addition to that investment. So if you are the kind of investor that have already accumulated your wealth, um, we also have the advisors here who can guide you to, to maintain that wealth and and generate the income that um, you're comfortable with given your your risk your risk tolerance. Yes. So and and I think I think so we have consensus about consistency and yeah, may, may I just make one rejoinder to what Dave said because there's a very important point that he made, which we want to just bring to the surface when he mentioned the idea of even just a standing order, right? Yeah, Again, that's exactly where I was going, actually. Consistent with our theme of us being our worst kind of enemies, you know, in terms of behavioral elements. There is quite a bit of inertia when we try to make decisions, we keep delaying and putting off, either to start or to be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. So just to, to quote-unquote defeat that, Yes. set up something where it comes out automatically you don't get it for you know so yes. whatever it is uh, you can best advise how, how that yes, works yes, you yes, know yes. um it comes directly to, to to us and we invest it for you as opposed to you making that conscious decision mm -hmm. to send the money um yes. you know so that's something that you know we, we think clients can really look into as as as, as individuals we we you know, as you said, we are our worst enemy when it comes on to making the decision multiple times. So you're right. You make the decision once to, to, to do an investment and it's much easier if that decision will, will, will be automatically executed months down the line. Not that you shouldn't review the investment with the, with the advisor, but you would have already made an in the next decision you should take is how much more you should increase it by, yeah. you know. So and, and and as your circumstances change, you 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 do that, but that takes away the emotions out of it in terms of ma making an investment this month, whether or not you, you you decide to go out as opposed to you know investing the money. You are you are investing in yourself first. You're paying yourself first, for example, and and yeah. putting that towards your investment. And we definitely have consensus around the importance of consistency, right? And 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 there's a special place for stocks because they bring company exposure. So if we could try and get into a different a different scenario where somebody maybe want, wants to bring some more energy to the game. So the kind of client that Dave referred to that is looking at stock picking, right? Um, and, and 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 maybe that featuring in, in part of their 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 portfolio that they're consistently adding to. We saw JMB, for instance, Richardo, the team recommended JMB, and we're seeing now where with the stock you know, over thirty four percent year to date. We're seeing the beginnings of 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 a turn in the price action in that stock. We're seeing it adding a lot of value to to portfolio. So Richard, if you could just take us through uh very very briefly the the reason for the recommendation uh you know a few a few months back I think it was 
and you know what the thinking there was and what what, what you're expecting and how the behavior has aligned with the expectation yeah um the jmb is quite a um an, an interesting security right uh, it's almost an enigma <laughs> right <laughs> because even the recent run up um in the in the price yes jmb is still ridiculously cheap yes right? because it, it is still trading under 10 times you know on a yes. trading basis right so even after that run up right um, and, and 10 that. times meaning you're paying 10 Early. dollars for every dollar of profit, Early. right? Right. Yes. Um, so what JMB has done um, in the past, and this, and again, it goes back to that important tenet of quality investing. It is how do executives allocate capital? Ultimately, that's what you're doing as a shareholder. You're lending your money to an entity for them to allocate it on your behalf. Right, and what are the incremental returns they're bringing in um, for you? And JMB has been doing quite um, well at that. Um, beginning first with their um, acquisition, is that what twenty three percent in Satico Financial Corporation? No, this is Satico yes. Jamaica's um, parent yes. company. Right? Yes. And the most recent results um, of Satico Financial Corporation was. Uh, was quite fantastic, right? But even before these um, results, our recommendation on JMB um, was, I think, on the tail end, I would say, of the, the, the pandemic abating, right? So we have been quite bullish on the stock uh, for some time, again, because of the the brand affinity, which is very mm-hmm. interesting. If you just <laughs> look at, you know, social media, you know, people yes. are in love um, with, with, with with the brand. Um, and though we're competitors, you know, we can give that um, to them. Um, mm-hmm. the, they have a very capable team in terms of the, um, the management, right? And most importantly, their performance is coming from core, right? So you're talking about sustainable growth um in 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 earnings so in terms of the runway ahead we believe that um jmb still has a significant amount of um, opportunities um their presence in Damrep, for example is one that doesn't come up to the surface um quite a lot but if you take if you think about it uh Damrep has a population of maybe what 10 million, 10 to, 50, 10 to 12 million. Um, yes. Because pension contribution there is, is mandatory. Um, JMB has a pension a business there which they're trying to, that and others, they're trying to build out um, there. So if you can cast your mind um, two, three, or even five years out into the future and imagine what that might look like um, and just kind of discount back, you say, well, boy, I'm getting. Um, but you'd say, you know, uh, 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 a range for um, a Toyota value, not knocking anybody's vehicle, but <laughs> just to, to bring the, 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 the point across. So yeah. that's really how we saw it, really. Right? Okay, okay. And so right now, uh, you know, it, it's it's scary times, Richardo. We see, we see interest rates moving up, uh, people taking losses even on bond funds as a result. Right and you know inflation has has been high, and you know you there's a lot of talk about the difficulty and the uncertainty ahead, right? So w- one of the things that we want to get into in maybe future discussions is is just in, in the here and now because based on what we've been promoting in terms of consistency, I think you know I'm of the view that difficult markets are markets in which you sow the seeds for significant returns into the future right and as we as we look at the market right now you know we see burrito recommending uh a massey in the in the here and now we see burrito recommending signals credit investments from a from a stock point of view um if we we, we, we can get into further conver, uh, conversations in the future, but one of the things we definitely want to do as we as we wind down here is to say, okay, right now we all see what how the markets have developed. We see the losses that people have have seen this year. 
So in terms of being consistent, the behavioral discipline that we've been promoting here, uh, these recommendations, and, and we also have consensus that stock investing really gives gives the, the average investor a great chance at transformational growth in their portfolio. Um, you know, ob- obviously I might be a little biased, but you, you could have bought Barita stock at $1.80. Uh, the stock, the stock has been north of eighty dollars, you know, in in um, in in, and, and that's 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 just like the last the last eleven years or so. That opportunity existed in, in reality here in Jamaica, right? So in, in the reality, as we see it now, um, we can we can have further conversations, but you know, we see we see the price to book value of some of these stocks. We see the price to earnings. Uh, in, in in this market uh, of uncertainty, I, I mentioned Cygnus. I mentioned Massey. W- just talk talk us through just just quickly as as a sum up, Richardo. Why why are we seeing these particular investments as 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 good here? You know, in in, in the present for allocation now, and and what do we think uh, the evolution of that will be in three five years time? Mm-hmm. All right, so we're really at um, a very interesting juncture, um, we're all. Um, as the first thing, oh, just to answer, just to back up a bit, what yes. I would want to um, impart on our, our listeners is that we're not necessarily pushing stocks, we're not, we're not stock guides, so to yes. speak, right? Um, it's always in the context of, um, of your portfolio, right? Yes. Um, we do sell bonds as well. We are in the alternative space, etc. But it's very important um, to know that different asset classes will perform differently in terms of your expected returns based on where you are in the general macro cycle, right? And what I mean by that is if, I always say, if, so for instance, if my grandfather or grandparents um, had said 10,000 US back in 1981, just put yes. US Treasuries, when US yes. Treasuries peaked at about 15%, um, percent, though yes. it was, was point, what, three nine at the peak of the um, pandemic, yes. you know, you know being you know, rich, um, <laughs> quote, unquote, right? Um, yes. But no, we have interest rates, um, well, not to get academic, but they call it at zero lower bow. So when interest rates are at, at zero point something, Unless it goes negative, which is not our expectation, although it is negative um, in Europe yes. and elsewhere, yes. possibly there exists that it's going to start um, going back up. And you know, basic pricing of fixed income is that you know if your yields or your interest rates start going up, prices kind of come off, no. right? Yes. Which is why you are seeing some of the poor returns in fixed income that you mentioned just now. Yes. So having said that. We also are at this place where we have a conflict, we have a commodities shock, etc. And just so going back to history um, and just reading the tea leaves, quote unquote, of where we are now, stocks just can give you an outsized return in yes. your portfolio based yes. on where we are. So that is the background and the context that we want to impart um, to, to our clients and, um, and listeners. Based on where we are now, this yes. makes sense for the context of your portfolio. But there are opportunities elsewhere because we are scoring, for, ex- for example, um, corporate credit space um, for opportunities there for those who are seeking fixed income um, opportunities because there are investors um, of a different demographic type like pensioners, for example, who are not necessarily investing for capital appreciation, but mm-hmm. investing for income, we still have to find those good risk-adjusted fixed income opportunities for them so they can get a consistent um, income stream on the fixed income space. Or in the um, in the equity space could be consistent dividend payers, for example. So we take all of that into consideration to look at all the unique needs of our clientele to make the best recommendations for them. So that's the background um, and context for our recommendations. Well, got you, got you. All right, so and Dave, you know, Ricardo, you know, you made a good point about um, per some persons maybe you know the demographics are different. You're, you're probably in retirement. What is impacting you right now would be inflation. Yeah, exactly. 
So positioning your 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 existing investment um, or the funds that you have set aside, even though you are retired, to to maintain a certain portfolio, um, is very very important as well. As the fund managers um, would be looking for ways to beat that inflation over time, and and they do have access to the research, and 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 and, and they have the know how um, to best make those decisions for you. So it's it's important that regardless of whether you're retired, you're still working, whether you have you, you, you just leave college, it is important to sit with the investment advisor to chart your journey and get started in terms of the investment and use the research and, 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 and resources that are available um, you know, at Berita.com and, and be able to achieve that financial freedom and success that you know that 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 you want for yourself, it is it is possible um, to get you know um, great returns over over time, regardless of existing market conditions. Now is not the time to stay on the sidelines at all. Now is the time to sit with the Barita advisor and and chart that course because, as you mentioned earlier, when when the when the upward movements um, start to take place, mm-hmm. you know, you, by the time you open your eyes, it, the growth would have, you know, the growth is already yeah. there. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. have you ever tried to watching watching a plant grow and, and you know, but, you know, so it's important that, you know, you, you make those decisions during these times, plant that seed and continue to plant seeds in, you know, by adding to your investments and use it, use the information that is available. Um, you know, we, we, we value the expertise of the team, about those who manage the fund and we value, um, and we, we, and we value, you know, the resources that are out there. Um, and and you know my colleague, I, I used a term yesterday, and he reminded me about it. That um, you don't rely on ATM ATM advice. You know you, you know persons sometimes want to just have a have an ATM advice. Um, you know um, when I, and by that I mean you you advice good advice takes time. It's, yeah. it's not just it's not just in and out. You know or what's good today? No. It's important to have a conversation and to understand what it is that, you know, is driving what's happening in the market and how that will benefit you because people are benefiting from what's in the market now. Persons are positioning their portfolio so that they preserve value and that they can meet their expenses down the road despite inflation being at 9 or 10% at yeah. this time. So Dave, bring us home. Uh, if I'm a young man, uh, old lady or you know i'm a pensioner or i'm middle-aged whatever the case may be and i'm hearing all of this i want to put it into practice uh come see dave how, how do i get started so how do you get started so one make a decision assess your budget and determine the amount of money that you have to invest or to set aside and guess what if you do the budget and you realize that you don't have the money, then redo the budget and create the money. <laughs> Whether you're going to add income to it by finding another source of income or you're going to eliminate an expense. But make that decision. Go to barita.com, look at the requirements for creating an account and set up an appointment to meet with one of our advisors. We can take it from there for you and guide you. But it is important that you make that in decision to get started by scheduling an appointment with us let us take you through the paperwork for regulatory purposes but the rest we will guide you along that investment journey and ensure that you meet your financial objectives over time all right thank you gentlemen thank you very much for your time and we look forward to doing doing this again and seeking to add value to our listenership and clientele all right thank you all thank you all thank you very much You've just listened to an episode of the Barita Podcast. The Barita Podcast is available on all Barita's social media platforms. If you'd like to invest with Barita Investments Limited, visit our website at barita.com or contact us at 876-926-2681 to get started.
This podcast is not a recommendation to buy or sell any securities. This isn't a research report, nor intended to serve as a basis for making any investment decisions. Contact a licensed investment advisor before making any financial decisions.